Time, patience and commitment, as well as an extra budget. These are my top three things why you shouldn't get yourself a poodle, a cat, a dog, or a pet in general. If you want to know why, then please keep on watching. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's the Poodle Mom again with the two toy poodles. It's saddening to hear the worsening news about the growing numbers of homeless pets in shelters. So today is all about reflecting whether or not you should get yourself a poodle or a pet in general. Let's dive into it. Number one for me is a lifelong extra budget. I emphasize on the lifelong extra. Why? Because having a pet is a lifetime commitment. And why is it extra? It's because it's not really a need for you to have a pet. Number one are the vet bills. There are the basic vaccinations, regular checkups, tests, spaying and neutering, and so many others. Also, depending on where you will get your pet, whether you rescue or if you're unlucky enough to get yourself one from a puppy mill or a reputable breeder, it really varies based on that whether or not you're going to be frequenting the vet or not. In my case, I would have to consider that both my girls came from puppy mills and I am facing the consequences of irresponsible breeding. For example, Bailey has luxating patella. I have a video on that if you guys are interested. I'll link it up in the cards above as well as in the description box below. Number two is food. It depends again which track you want to go for. There, there are people who prefer kibble, there are people who prefer raw, there are people who prefer home cooked. I am the latter. I do raw and home cooked for my girls and depending on which one you have decided to pursue for your pets, then of course there are the added expenses there. So in my case, I accept the realities of spending for their raw and home cooked meals. And then there's of course the vitamins and minerals. If you go kibble, then you don't necessarily need to put all these vitamins and minerals because kibble in itself is already nutritionally balanced. Whereas you do raw and home cook, then you would have to add these supplements because you cannot perfectly imitate what they have been feeding in the wild where they don't need those supplements and stuff. Number three, training. Most people would think that just because poodles are known to be very smart and they learn fast, they're very good with training, doesn't mean you're not going to have to put the extra budget to spend for their training. Some people can do it themselves. You can invest in maybe an online course of um, training and stuff, or some people don't want to do it. Then of course you would have to spend the extra budget to hire a trainer to either train you or train the dogs themselves. You don't know, but this is something that you would have to invest in. For me, it's because they're really, really smart and a poodle needs a pack leader. If you do not lead the poodle, they will take that leadership position from you and that's where unwanted behavioral problems occur because they will train you to do things at their bidding, which shouldn't be the case because they're the ones that have to live in your home. You have to train your dogs to assimilate with your lifestyle for you to have a forever dog. Number four for, for me for poodles is grooming. Grooming is a non-negotiable. It is expensive. Why? Because unique to the breed, poodles do not have fur, they have hair. So what is the difference between the two? Fur grows until a certain length and then will fall off. Whereas hair, it will just keep growing, much like human hair. You cannot leave it be because unlike human hair that is kind of thicker, their, their coats are much like teddy bears. And if you don't brush it, it tends to mat. When it mats, it causes a lot of problems for the dogs. Now you have an option to actually shave them, but it really depends on you. Personally, I do not like the shaved look of poodles where they don't have fur. The reason why I got poodles is because I like furry dogs, but I just don't want the shedding. So hence the poodle. Number two for me is time. Notice that I did not use the word extra in this category. Why? Because when you say extra, it means spare time. For me, dog ownership is not having spare time for your pet. It's making time for them. Why? Because if you only spend your extra time or your spare time for your pets to do their training, to feed them, to, to groom them, and so many other things, more often than not, this is the main reason why behavioral problems come in. If you don't play with your dogs, if you don't train them properly, then they will naturally work on what their instincts tell them. My third one is patience and commitment. You have to commit yourself and have the patience for training. You don't have to be those super professional trainers where uh, your dogs can do all sorts of tricks. The training that you would have to apply and assimilate in your lifestyle would be something that you think 
you can live with all throughout their whole lifespan and all throughout your lifespan regardless of whatever changes may be uh, for example you got your dog when you're single and then all of a sudden you got married then the training that you put in would fit into your lifespan as a single person and a married person and then of course you have to have the patience and commitment to your pets when they make mistakes because they will surely make mistakes mistakes like ruining your furniture or destroying your gadgets trust me i have had that experience where i had a brand new phone and my dogs chewed on the cords and stuff so i had to purchase a new one for it and then of course the patience for grooming the patience for the unwanted vet bills and last but not the least the patience for this lifetime commitment not every day will be cute, not every day will be fun. There will be days that are terrible, trust me. So I hope that this video will help you make that decision, whether or not you are ready. If you don't think you can commit, I'm not saying you have to fully commit to everything that I stated. It's not, it's not a box, you guys. I think what I want to say is take your time. Let's not add to the problem of the growing number of pets in shelters. Make sure that when you make that decision, you are fully committed, you're ready, both financially and everything else. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple more videos. If you really want to get a poodle, I have a few videos explaining more about the breed. Please feel free to look through them. I'll also link them up in the description box below and we hope to see you there.